Public transport in Oslo and Akershus has been a success. Over the last five years, growth in public transport has been several times higher than the population growth. Public transport has taken market shares and stifled car traffic growth. Large investments have been made in roads and railway tracks in the Oslo region. A large part of the finances derive from the toll ring, but also from significant local and, not least, governmental spending. Old railway tracks are renovated and new solutions for the permanent structure are implemented. Even with passenger numbers higher than ever, the population growth will swallow this increase in capacity over the next few years. To meet future capacity demand, even the road networks have been significantly upgraded to meet the increased volume. There are 1.2 million people living in Oslo and Akershus today, accounting for almost a quarter of the Norwegian population. The population is expected to grow by 350,000 by 2030. This equals two large Norwegian cities in 16 years, or a typical Norwegian village per year. This makes for an enormous volume increase in transport planning. If this increase should be met with public transport, passenger numbers need to be doubled by 2030. Space shortage in Arkasus and Oslo makes the expansion of public transport more expensive and difficult than in many other city areas. The growing population not only increases passenger numbers. Industry and trade transport is on the increase and the Ministry of Transport and Communications estimates an increase in the region freight transport by 50% within 2030. If this growth should be met by car traffic alone, 10 lanes need to be added to the E18 motorway through Asker and Bærum. Most of the growth must be met by public transport, bike and walking. Oslo and Akershus want its transportation solutions to be as environmentally friendly as possible. Transport in the capital area is also important to the rest of the country. The E6 and E18 run through the city, and Oslo is the hub for the national railway. As a logistical hub for Norwegian freight transport, we all depend on these challenges being solved. 80% of all imported general cargo comes to the Oslo region. Many large companies have their central warehouses in the area. No matter how you see the future terminal structure becoming in eastern Norway, the Oslo region will be the main point for freight transport and important for the rest of the country. Large educational and research institutions attract a lot of students coming from outside of the region. The capital has many workplaces of national significance. Public and private headquarters that people and the industry and trade all over the country depend on. It is not just the capital area itself that is inflicted when the employees here show up late for work. The regions are increasingly important internationally. The EU strategy for smart, sustainable and including growth, Europe 2020, emphasises the importance of the regions. The capital region of Norway competes with other large city regions in Europe. A functioning transport system is significant to succeed in this competition. Bad accessibility equals bad economics. A report from Pervy in 2011 estimated the freight transport costs due to queuing on the E18 motorway to be between 670 and 1,000 million Norwegian kroner. Without significant improvement, the price paid by freight transport in 2030 will be doubled. Passenger transport must be met by public transport, bike and walking to make way for freight transport on the roads. The average waiting time on the E18 Asker to Oslo is 45 minutes during rush hour traffic. This deteriorates the quality of life for those travelling here every day. It also affects the transportation for industry and trade from other parts of the country and the society loses money. Traffic Index compares traffic in 169 cities and shows the afternoon rush hour in Oslo to be the worst in Northern Europe even worse than rush hours in cities like London, Rome and Paris.
Oslo and Akershus spent 10,000 years reaching 1 million inhabitants. In as little as 50 years, we will reach the next million. How will we secure transport then? In the short term, Oslo and Arcashus wants an agreement on the city environment in place and use reward systems for minor improvements in public transport and bicycle routes. NSB's route map and new train sets increases its capacity on the most popular routes and gives more flexibility in choosing train. But there is no room for more trains during rush hour until the infrastructure has been extended. New tracks, such as the follow track, must be in place. The intercity triangle must be built out. A new railroad tunnel is forcing its way forward. The traffic development on the subway demands a new subway tunnel within 2025, in addition to new track solutions. Even though we want to meet the growth in people transport by public transport, bike and walking, the population growth also means that the roads need to be built out. The transport of goods and services is increasing. Plummer does not take the bus. The west corridor of the E18 is seen as the biggest bottleneck in Norway and needs to be sped up. At the same time, other projects need to be in place to secure accessibility in the years to come. Not least to let the buses through. In many areas today, buses are queuing alongside the cars. Walking and bicycle roads must be built out, both the main bicycle road network and around schools and living areas. We can't just build. We also have to settle the traffic in a smarter way. The capacity is stretched to its limits during rush hour. On other times of the day, the capacity is good for roads and tracks. Could we steer traffic and exploit the capacity we have in a better way? If measures are not implemented, the entire traffic system is in danger of breaking down with the volume increase we are expecting. Oslo and Arcus Hus have made plans together with RUTA, the Norwegian Public Roads Administration, and the Norwegian Government Agency for Railway Services for solving the issue. Locally, we will do what is needed to ensure that as many people as possible travel by public transport. Through a planned collaboration between Oslo and Arcus Hus, we aim to build efficient hubs for public transport. There are many indications that we need to establish more suburbs in Arcus Hus. The Oslo Package 3 allows extensive financing to both road and track, but is far from enough to meet the challenges. That is why we invite national authorities to be a part of the lift that is needed for the country, the capital region, and needed by a fourth of Norway's population in the near future. Oslo and Arcus Hus will use measures tied to efficient utilisation of space, the development of hub transit spots and traffic minimising measures to meet the population growth. But we also depend on increased economic contributions to meet the transport challenges. Together we can succeed, but time is of the essence. The challenges will only worsen in the years to come if we do not make large investments in transport solutions. This is all about ensuring accessibility and functionality in the most populated areas of Norway, a robust and sustainable capital region. Mm -hmm.